Hello everyone and welcome to the latest edition of Art Master Vision. Tonight I'm going to be painting this Perry Miniatures um, fifth, uh, well it's going to be painted as the fifth Dutch militia uh, from the Napoleonic period. Uh, very nice figure indeed. Temporarily mounted on um, some card here. Alright, so we'll start by um, base coating the trousers. I'm going to use um, Vallejo Dark Grey for this. Um, so, we've been having some trouble with uh, the visions lately. Um, mostly due to uh, some freezing um, at the moment we're having a lighting difficulty which is unusual normally the lights aren't um, that much of a problem try turning them off for a second So I guess we'll just uh, see how we get on. Uh, I'm just going to get some quick reference up on my computer. Right, so uh, yes, dark grey for the trousers. Just adding a slight bit of water to the paint just to water it down. As you can see, I'm not really worrying about being messy at the moment, as this is the first colour that we're applying. Uh, so now we'll quickly undercoat the flesh. Uh, we're going to use Shadows Flesh. up I mean, you don't really need the reference um, on to hand all the time I mean these are fairly straightforward um, with their uniform but it's good to have a reminder of um, button colours etc seems a shame really that um, the streaming lately hasn't really been up to scratch uh, the last few times we've tried there's been uh, some major errors which means we couldn't carry on uh, I wonder if it's actually the camera that I'm using or rather than the services that I'm using I'm not sure but we'll see um, so the flesh uh, we've done the flesh 
now we're going to move on to the wood and I'm going to use German camo black brown as I said I'm going to try and keep this um, fairly short this video the quicker we can get this done the less likely I think it is to freeze I'll just uh, base coat the hair in this colour as well right so now we're going to move on to the backpack I'm going to use dark rust to base coat this um, I'm also going to use this as a base coat for the water bottle strap Okay, so the blue, um, I normally use a grey blue um, for my Napoleonic blue uh, uniforms, but I'm actually going to try a different blue today. This is um, dark Prussian blue, which is more, much more of a blue blue than a grey blue. I've actually already got some squeezed out from earlier. Um, I just added a, a small amount of black to it, so it's actually quite a bit darker. And this is just going to be on the sleeves, a little bit at the back uh, there's no piping on this figure which is nice um, well I guess uh, apart from the shoulder pads there's a, a tiny bit of pipe in there but the collar and cuffs aren't they're just um, solid which is nice so this figure is going to form part of a larger unit um, which you'll probably see fairly soon and for the uh, bag I'm going to use US filled drab um, I've actually already got some of that squeezed out as well and this is going to be for a nice off-white bag Um, I'd just like to quickly say thank you to um, a guy who sent me a figure for the Visions. Um, I think it's a foundry figure. But um, I kind of want to keep it secret for now because I'm planning on doing that in a future vision, probably one that's fairly soon. Uh, so if you're watching, don't, uh, don't think that I've forgotten about it. And I do appreciate when uh, people send figures in as a donation to see on the vision um, I'm not uh, if you send a figure in more than likely I will do it um, you know because you've taken the time to watch and to send a miniature to me you know I'm gonna take the time to paint it okay so now for the water bottle I'm gonna use field blue this is kind of a grey blue So now for the um, collar and cuffs, I'm going to use uh, light rust, they're going to have nice orange collar and cuffs. This is going to make a good base coat. Um, I'll also do this on the uh, cockade as well.
Alright, so now for the silver on the musket oh, and the um, emblem on the shako will be silver. I'm going to use bolt gun metal. This is a nice games workshop silver. Um, you may notice that the bayonet looks uh, ever so slightly thinner than um, when you buy the miniature. Um, I like to file down the bayonets to make them a bit more realistic looking and uh, so they're not too chunky. Uh, I think it doesn't take that long to do really and it's a nice little uh, touch to the figures. In the past few visions actually the volume has been rather loud on the recording which kind of distorts it so I'm making a conscious effort to try and speak a little bit quieter um, just so it doesn't distort too much. Alright so um, now all that's left to base coat will be the white. I'm going to use uh, Vallejo light grey for this. Again, just added a slight amount of water there If you can see the turn backs, uh, they will be white. Just got a little bit showing there. Okay, so now he's fully undercoated. Now I'm going to start highlighting the trousers. I'm going to use Vallejo London Grey for the first highlight. And I'm actually going to add a smidgy bit of um, dark grey. I don't know if you can see this, just a little bit of that in there, just to take the colour down a notch so it's not quite as um, contrasty.
This is actually a really skinny looking figure. I know that the Perrys can be um, quite slender compared to a lot of other manufacturers but to me this figure actually just stands out slightly so he looks uh, quite a bit slimmer than the um, other uh, Perry Napoleonic figures I guess that's um, to do with the fact that they haven't actually got a lot of equipment and it's um and there's quite a nice marching pose really looks like he's got a lot of movement in him But um, that actually just could be the fact that I've um, been painting a lot of front rank lately. So I've gotten used to the chunkiness of a front rank Napoleonic. If the, uh, uh, the vision doesn't freeze by the time we get to the end of it, I'll show you a few... British Napoleonic generals I've been painting uh, which are front rank I got a newsletter from Front Rank the other day uh, saying that they're going to be releasing some Wurttemberg Napoleonics uh, next year I think and there's a few preview photos which look quite nice Right, so that's that. Uh, we'll do the first highlight on the flesh using flesh base. For anyone interested, this is the Army Painter uh, Wargamer Detail Brush that I'm using. Um, one of the white handled triangular ones.
Uh, also, if I have time at the end, I'll show you a pack of uh, Kalinsky Sable brushes that I got the other day. Um, it's a five pack and it ranges from five zero to zero. So you can see the scale um, change in the size of the bristles on the brush. Oh yeah, um, this is Vallejo Light Mud. I'm using this as the first highlight for the uh, bag. But I guess um, everyone has their own opinion on brushes. Some brushes suit some people, but they don't suit others. Um, for instance, I like um, sable brushes, um, ones that keep a good point and are fairly long. Not, not overly long, but I guess this is quite long. Um, but whereas my mum uh, prefers using very short brussels, uh, brussels <laughs> very short, um, short-haired bristle brushes. Um, she uses uh, Jarvis or um, Kalinsky. All right, so. Uh, highlight the water bottle next. Uh, I'm going to go straight on with um, grey blue. Here we go. adjusting the focus slightly hopefully that's uh, a little bit clearer now alright so now I'm going to use um, dark Prussian blue for the first highlight on the jacket now this won't show up that much, but it will be good enough for the first highlight. Give us some, uh, something to work on. Alright, so now I'm going to use flat brown to highlight the wood. I'll just do some straight lines. And we're going to use leather belt to highlight the backpack. And uh, we'll also use this on the 
a water bottle strap. Alright, so now I'm going to do the second highlight to the grey. I'm just going to add, uh, I've got some li light grey, Vallejo light grey in my palette uh, just here. And I'm just going to scoop some of my dark grey into that just to darken it down a smidge. So I had a strange dream last night that I went to um, a customer's house and I've never been to this customer's house in real life so I don't know what, you, what the house looks like but in my dream it was this bizarre mansion type place with corridors coming off of different rooms going upstairs, going downstairs like some crazy mansion fun house or something and there was a butler which was strange quite a old fashioned looking butler and um, then as happens in quite a lot of dreams something strange happens and I was in the bath in the customers house uh, which is completely bizarre uh, the customer wasn't there so I guess that was good but uh, I do tend to have strange dreams I have a lot of strange dreams lately I haven't been eating cheese before bed, so I don't see why I should be having strange dreams. Alright, so now we're just going to do the second highlight on the flesh. I'm going to use flesh base for this.
Alright, so now I'm going to use Prussian blue to highlight the jacket again. I'm going to add a teeny bit of the dark Prussian blue in with that, just so there's not too much contrast there. I have a funny feeling though I might end up redoing this jacket in a more of a realistic worn grey blue like I normally do. I'm not sure. Alright, so now I'm going to use some uh, power sand to highlight the bag again. Uh, ivory would do just as well. In fact, ivory may even be a little bit better, but I haven't got it to hand right now. Alright, so now for the final highlight on the trousers, I think I'm just going to use light grey on its own. Alright, so now I'm going to use uh, beige brown um, to second highlight the backpack. And for the orange, um, I'm just going to probably just put a little bit of light brown on it, see if that works as a highlight. Yeah, that looks alright.
and then let's do a final highlight on the jacket just using Prussian blue on its own Uh, just uh, do a little bit of the piping on the shoulder pads and I'm going to take some black wash now, this is Badad Black Games Workshop backwash. I'll wash over the silver on the musket and on the hat. And then a teeny bit of brass. This is the low brass. Just going to use that um, the uh, butt of the gun. The buttons uh, will be silver. Uh, highlight the white on the straps. Going to use off white. Nearly finished now, so that's quite good. So, uh, we just had a late comer in the live chat. Say hello to him. Unfortunately, most of the uh, vision is over, but uh, I'll probably be putting this on YouTube. If the video doesn't freeze by the end of the vision then it will definitely go on YouTube. If it does freeze then it might not. Uh, I don't really want to put an unfinished video on there. I'm going to highlight the black using Andrea Black. This is the first shadow. Uh, just trying to adjust the camera again. Someone said it's slightly blurry. Is that better? 
Yeah, that looks better to me. Uh, it's good if people do let me know if the video is blurry because uh, it's kind of hard for me to tell because uh, the uh, screen is fairly uh, fairly small from what I can see on my screen. Yeah, energy paint's actually quite nice. It's it's quite thick, so you have to make sure you water it down. But I like the uh, the tones you get and the um, I don't know. It's just quite nice. I mean, even when you water it down, it doesn't it doesn't thin out too much, and it usually dries pretty matte, which is nice. Uh, it probably won't dry that matte if you put it on thick. I tend to find if you water it down a little bit, then it will dry a bit matter. I actually really like the smell of it for some reason. It just smells funny. It smells different to other paints that I use. So I've got um, Andrea Black set, which is nice, and I've got the Andrea Flesh set, which is nice, and I've got the Andrea White set, which is also nice. So we're nearly finished. Um, I'm going to add a uh, highlight to the silver. I'm going to use aluminium. This is Model Air Metallic from Vallejo. This is a really bright silver perfect for buttons and uh, just highlighting the silver detail I'm just going to take uh, some black well, this is actually the dark blue but it's just as good it's important to black up uh, the buttons um, before putting any silver or any gold on top of unless it's a really dark color anyway like dark blue because if you don't uh, if you don't black up the buttons first then it just won't show up and it's not worth taking the time to paint them if they're not going to show up Okay, so um, if I can find my blue wash, uh, I'll wash over the water bottle. I like to use um, a sermon blue. Here we go. And this just tones down the water bottle slightly. 
try not to put too much on, just soak it up with a brush if you do. And then that will give a little bit of extra shading but also take the harshness away from the grey blue. Right, so um, I'm just going to use some mahogany brown as a second highlight to the wood. Take some white and put the eyes in. Uh, the customer requested that the eyes um, don't have a dark, um, dark center, so they don't show up too much. They like a like the eyes to be slightly softer. Alright, so now for the highlight on the black, I'm going to use uh, Andrea Black. This is the base, number one. This is kind of purpley, this, this shade of it, which is actually quite nice, especially if you uh, put the greyer, greyer black on top, because there's a, a, a lighter tone, only slightly lighter, but it's more grey. And when you put that on top of the purpley colour that I'm using here, it tends to look quite nice. Alright, so there we have the finished figure. I'm glad that the vision didn't freeze up on me today. Uh, as I said um, earlier on, I'll show you some front rank figures that I was working on. Actually, there's a little bit of silver there I've put on his sleeve. I don't think that's actually meant to be silver, so I'm just going to go over that. Um, someone just asked if I use any kind of magnifying glass for the eyes, but um, I don't actually ever use a magnifying glass. Um, I'm only um, 22 years old. I had to think about that for a sec. <laughs> uh, so my eyes are pretty good at the moment, so I don't actually need to use any kind of magnifying glass for anything. Um, I will have some photographs of this figure. Um, I've got to take some for the customer, so you'll definitely see this um, on the forum. And I'm going to have a whole unit of these to do anyway, so uh, you'll see those. Uh, okay, so now I can just grab a few front rank generals. Alright, so we've got this guy here. Let's just move the camera up slightly. Right, so most of these are just staff officers. Uh, there's a couple of personality ones. This is a similar blue to what I've just used. Um, a bit more vivid to what I usually do. Uh, 
um, but this uh, it's actually a really nice figure. Um, he's going to be going on uh, eBay with the rest of these generals. So if you're interested and you're watching this video quite recently, uh, then you might be able to get your hands on it. Obviously, it's going to be based. Uh, moving on to the next one. We have the guy here handing the uh, envelope. Let's move the camera up again slightly. Just to focus. So, I mean, these are actually really nice figures. Um, I tend to mainly just paint the French generals, but I think the British ones are just as nice. Um, then we've got uh, this guy. Now I went for a brighter red this time. My red's usually quite a bit darker than this. Um, but I fancied trying to brighten my painting up slightly. So um, I went and used uh, scarlet instead of the usual red that I use. Um, but that, I think the, the bright red goes quite nice with the deeper blue that I've used there. Um, then we've got this guy as well in the red again. Um, I, I've used uh, just a dark red for the sash. Um, I know that a lot of uh, the sashes, a lot of people like the sashes to look slightly um, mauvey or pinky. Um, which I do like as well, but since I did a brighter red, I thought that just a dark red would look nice in, in contrast. Uh, so this is a personality um, figure. I can't remember his name, it begins with a B. Um, I'm sure you probably know. I like him because he's got a very really characterful face. And this is um, this horse was done using the Andrea Black set. Um, someone just said that they don't like the floating reins on the horses. Now that's um, something that you kind of just have to deal with unless you're going to take the time to green stuff them uh, because even if you bend the reins um, they kind of they don't really reach most of the time. So if you really want the reins to look realistic, then you have to spend the time to uh, green stuff them. But as you can see, that's quite a nice black on the horse there. Uh, so now this one, which is one of my favourite um, British personalities, uh, I think he's. Uh, I believe his name's Uxbridge. On the um, old leopard skin there, which is nice. It's got a lot of gold on him as well. And then Stapleton Cotton, again with the leopard skin, uh, covered in gold decoration. Lots of lace on him. I did him on a white horse, I thought that was uh, quite nice with the leopard skin print. Um, so, yep, yeah, I think that's it for the generals. Um, as I said, they'll probably pop up on eBay. They usually um, go fairly cheap, I think, so you might be able to grab yourself a bargain, um, but we'll see. Um, thanks again uh, for watching. Uh, we'll just finish up on this figure. Here we go. Have a little bit of zoom in there. Yep. Uh, thanks for. Uh, oh, hang on. Wait a sec. Someone just reminded me. Uh, I was going to show the brush set off. Here we go. So these is uh, the. Uh, Kalinsky sable brushes. Um, they do look quite um, similar on the actual video here, um, but on the far left is the five zero. They do actually go down to a ten zero as well, which is 
um, ever so slightly smaller um, and then obviously you've got the four zero next to that and then the three zero and then the two zero and then the zero at the end just adjust the focus so you can see a bit better Going the wrong way to see because the card's so bright um, but these are Red Sable Kalinsky creative models um, they do go slightly bigger than this as well um, so yeah I do uh, for our undercoating, they're not that fantastic these sizes. I definitely go for more of a uh, a two, probably for base coating. A zero might be good for um, more intricate base coating, but these are really, uh, I'd say, more highlighting brushes uh, for your detail work, <coughs> like lace and faces and stuff. Um, but yeah, these are my favourite brushes. So um, uh, this set was actually, I think it was about £11 or £13 or something. Um, they're not the cheapest of brushes, but they work out cheaper if you actually get them in a set. Um, I got them from snmstuff.co.uk, which is one of my favourite websites. They sell loads of uh, Vallejo paints and uh, brushes, and they've just updated their website as well. Um, so... Well, I'm not sure if they updated it yet. They said they were, but go check them out. They're a really good service as well. They're always quick on postage. Um, probably the cheapest Vallejos that I found on the internet. snmstuff.co.uk um, So visit our website, artmasterstudio.co.uk for commissions and galleries and tutorials. Uh, please check out the Steve Dean forum for lots of inspiration. Uh, we're on there, we post pictures and stuff on there. And we also announce divisions in the painting section. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please um, take the time to look at those things. Um, yeah, so thanks again for watching and good night.